come inside, Warriors. It is nice and dry in here oh, in the oh Warriors God. den. Josh, I'm, how are you doing today? I'm cold, bro. It's, it's rainy and wet. And uh... That's why we have the den. Come inside, everyone. We've got uh, a lot to talk about. We've got Tempest. We've got Storm Tides. We've got uh, a very uh, short uh, testing ground segment of coming, <laughs> which uh, should be fun. And uh, more besides. So let's get right into it. We'll first talk about the friend referral program. So between uh, July 22nd and September 22nd, you have an opportunity to earn rewards by inviting your friends to play with you. Uh, to refer, just log on to that website, uh, referral.ubisoft.com slash for hyphen honor. Uh, choose the friends you want to invite from the list on the right hand side and select invite. Uh, rewards are going to automatically be added to your game inventory within 24 hours of the reward level being met. And this goes until September 22nd again, so you have some time. Now, uh, next up, Josh, what can you tell us about those Twitch drops? Oh, yes, Twitch drops. We've been doing Twitch drops for a little bit now, but, and we're still doing them. So um, for anyone who is watching and wants to have drops on the stream, just make sure that your Twitch account and your uh, Ubisoft account are linked so you can receive your rewards. And as you can see here, per 30 minutes, you can receive one scavenger crate. Make sure you go ahead and, and redeem that, uh, all of that good stuff. And also, for every 10 minutes of additional accumulated time, you have the chance to win 100,000 steel. Matt, how much steel do you have? Uh, like a million, because I just give it to myself when we uh, record videos so we can get the I, stuff we need. Should you know, I say I, that? Thanks. I, it's funny you say that because as soon as I asked you that, I was just like, I have a crap ton too because yeah, we, we just, have... we just oh, do well, it. well, you can be like us and be breaded up like a chicken tender. Haven't said that in a while and go ahead and win that steal. So keep an eye out for your notifications. We're excited to do this. Yes. Uh, thank you, Josh, for explaining Twitch drops and how much uh, steel we have. Uh, we will be joined now by Clarissa to talk about Dominion series. Whoosh, we're, we're back, Warriors, with Clarissa to talk about the uh, Dominion series stage two major that happened uh, just on August 28th there. So Clarissa, what can you tell us about uh, what happened? Yeah, uh, you know, it was this past previous weekend. Uh, we have our results. So here's the EU winners. Congratulations to Nemesis Esports for getting first. Golf and clap. for the Golf NA clap. major, we also have Team Killing Service taking the win as well. So congratulations to our winners. It was a really fun major this time around. Lots of differences compared to stage uh, stage one, uh, obviously with Nemesis winning because they did get third last time, but this time they really showed they're just they're dominant, especially in the face of adversity since they did have uh, a few issues, including like an emergency sub, but so did another team. Um, even like for the grand finals, uh, Monkey Business was up one, but then there was a disconnect, and both teams agreed to restart the, the first match. So big uh, thank you and shout out to Monkey Business for their sportsmanship, because that's the, you know, grand finals. Whoa! Woo! So that's that. So for the NA side, we had the Team Killing Service also displaying their big dominance this time around. What's really cool was that they beat uh, Guidance Gaming in the winner's final, but in stage one, uh, Guidance Gaming defeated them. So swoop. those two teams, they do have unfinished business. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens in stage three uh, for both sides, for EU and NA, because really anything can happen, um, even with the meta, because stage one, we had Warmonger uh, prevalent this time around, and Shugoki. Like, we had almost the Shugoki in every single team. We even had a Berserker in one of the teams, so that's really cool. Hey. Lots of John uh, as well. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Nerf scene coming. But uh, we also want to give a special MVP award to Bucko on the NA side, the warlord that you see here, because he displayed lots of clutch, uh, clutch moves, I guess. Not clutch Meister moves, but clutch moves. Like he, he won a few 1v3s, which helped <laughs> secure the victory uh, for them in, in the grand finals. So congratulations. Awesome but, performance. Yes, I agree. But that's not all. We have stage three coming up. It's uh, starting on October 9th, but uh, registrations are open now at battlefy.com slash dominion series. And for those who are in chat saying that they can defeat all these uh, players in the major, well, Easy now's your peasy. time to shine. 
to join these qualifiers. I know you won't, but you should anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Put the door in the middle like, of I see all these people talking, be... but I really don't see their names ever in the in the qualifiers. So please prove me wrong. I will I will be very happy. Dude. You earn that prize money if it's so easy. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like you can also join the Discord Dojo where even all these competitive players that you see on the stream, they are coaches. They will help you get tips, get good dodge all the things that you want in life <laughs> in <general. laughs> absolutely no and in life yeah you know and in life and so just join because everything will gear up to stage four which is the championship finals which will happen in february so it's not the end you still have time join up and we'll see you on the battlefield we will and a um a quick reminder for um the next major uh, when you were watching the last major, uh, you could watch on the For Honor stream and the Ubisoft stream uh, and earn those rewards a little bit faster. Uh, and we heard you guys uh, say, hey, that doesn't... People, Some people didn't know they could do that, and some people did, so it created an imbalance there. So we've heard you, it's going to be, uh, you watch one stream, you earn the rewards at the proper rate, it's going to be normal next time. So thank you everyone who told us that in, in the chat. We appreciate it. Um, so thank you so much, Clarissa, for coming on and telling us about Dominion Series for Honor and Life. Uh, we will be right back with the Tempest story trailer. Sea Warriors. Nice. Let's go. Holy shit. We have endured. We have suffered. Yet our resolve has not faltered. Now the gods have spoken, tearing the skies. They want to remind us. Of our rage to live. Of our will to conquer. Of our dauntless hearts pounding louder. We are the tears of blood flowing in a raging sea. But let us not pray the gods for mercy. Let them watch us. Let them hear us. Let them bear witness to us as we harness the storms and embrace their fury. Part of Exile Expedition. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy trailer. That was that was amazing. Uh, we are back with three, in my opinion, stars of the silver screen. Uh, Nico, Elise, and Andrew, welcome to the Warriors Den. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hello. Uh, we have a lot to get through. There's a lot of topics to talk about with uh, with Tempest. So, Nico, what can you tell us about the the season in general? Well, Heathmore is still very much exposed to Mother Nature's wrath this season, and after the drought, the wildfires, uh, in season three, Heathmore will see heavy rains and, and flooding alter its environment. So <laughs> yeah. Tempest is central uh, to uh, the, this season. That's going to be our main theme that will show in our platform utilization, that will show in our battle pass rewards. Uh, we will also launch this season with a new event called Stormtide. And during that event, uh, you know, starting at September 9th, mm. and for three weeks, you'll be able to play and loot a bunch of new rewards and uh, weapons. Okay, awesome. And while I'm talking about events, uh, you know, I want to talk a little bit about what's coming in the future. We all know season three is Halloween season. And while I don't want to spoil the, <laughs> the surprise, we have something super special uh, this year for Halloween. It's going to feel very different from what we've uh, done in the past few years. So uh, stay tuned for more info on this uh, in the upcoming months. Um, back to season launch now. Uh, we have a lot of gameplay updates coming. Um, we have uh, characters from the last testing round that are coming, uh, Shugoki, Orochi, and Raider. We have uh, fixes to option selects and also uh, dodge fixes that will make uh, the overall combat option much more selects. reliable. We have a new <laughs> testing round coming early this season. Stay tuned for the oh. date. This one is going to go live much <laughs> earlier than usual. Fuck. And it will be about Dominion <coughs> rebalancing some renowned gains, trying uh, to uh, improve some of the rules around the game mode. And also, Shinobi is going to be coming back as, uh, you know, 
given the feedback we got from the past testing round, we wanted to uh, have a second go at uh, updating our Shinobi character. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think I think that's it. I think that's it. Or oh no, I think I forgot. I forgot something very one more, important. One more time. I think I forgot something very important. We've been asking for unique executions in the past, and I'm happy to announce that Tempest season will have 29 new executions. Oh. This time only one for each character. So we're super excited about this. Uh, and, you know, we can't wait to show you a little bit more. Of Who wanted unique that executions? Wanted That's it for me. Enjoy the rest of the stream. <laughs> Thank you, Nico. Uh, that's awesome news. And yes, we will be in just a bit. We'll see all those unique executions. But for the narrative of Tempest, Elise, what can you tell us about the sort of general background of the season? So um, this year, so the, this is the year of the Covenants, right? And we have uh, Horcross and Chimera fighting each other, making new alliances. And then uh, Nature's Wrath uh, like manifested uh, her, herself itself uh, during season two throughout a drought, a massive drought that struck every uh, every place in Seathmore. And various warriors, you know, they tried to react to that, to uh, like to pray to gods for the rain to come back. Uh, the Kyoshin even arrived and tried to restore nature's balance uh, through their actions. And now uh, we have an answer from the gods and it, it's coming from the Vikings. Uh, so basically uh, you, you had the warriors like uh, from the, in the shadows trying to make sacrifices, but very gruesome sacrifices at times. And uh, other times they were like more uh, worshiping nature, trying to really uh, appease the gods. And now we have that massive tempest striking Heath War. So um, there's a, like the, those cool Arthurs that you will see here and there and more with Andrew right after. Uh, but we're, we've also like been very much inspired by uh, Norse myth mythology this, uh, for this season. So I was mentioning gods and we have two of them like sh showing here and there in customization, like, especially in those really, really cool mood effects. Um, we have two versions, uh, so one is uh, Ran and the other one is Aegir. It's like a, a couple of deities in Norse mythology and they are like the embodiment of the seas and the tides and, the, and like the waters. Um, there are like so many cool stories about them, uh, no very, very specific uh, visual represent representation of them though, so that's why we, we, like, we took a lot of liberties like inspired by the other uh, sea creatures and things like that like, to, to depict them in our game. Uh, and yeah, one, one cool story is, for example, is like uh, they have they are almost like the uh, the the guardians of the underworld of Valhalla for people who have drawn at sea, for example. So that's uh, one of the cool myth uh, that around those two gods. So this is yeah, uh, and many things will be uh, pouring and, and like uh, drenching players with like cool executions as we just saw right before. Uh, and yeah, I can't wait to see how the players will react to all of that. Yeah, so the, the the Viking prayers worked, which is which is good for them. So regardless of, of who wins the faction war, that's that's a W for the Vikings in my book. <laughs> yes. So uh, that's that's all really cool background. Uh, Andrew, with the in-game realization itself and and the map changing, uh, what can you tell us? Well, as you noticed by now, uh, we're focusing on the Viking in this season. I mean, Viking had a be belief in deity of the sea, which were introduced by, introduced by Elise. Their legend made people to believe they had to make offerings. But for one side, they meant respecting the nature, but for some people, they believed that offering required blood. Mm. And drought made people to be a, a bit more desperate and difficult to make the good decisions. And this is uh, going to be showcasing in the one of the map. And we worked on the three maps uh, this time, which is the shard, as you can see right now, and the gauntlet and the harbor. And each map has a different status of flooding. Uh, on the, on this one, the vista is a oh kind of a wow, holy it. shit! And gauntlet Look at that. is where we see quite drastic changes to support the narrative scenes. The player will That's find the interesting cool. changes of the mood from each capture points and the starting point. It may not be shown every uh, the point, so it will be pretty interesting for you guys to find out. And of course, the like all the vistas are going to be uh, uh, kind of changed around it. The mainly the movie, uh, the Midsoma was a reference in this map, and it's it's the place to introduce the reminder of the horrible decisions that were made for uh, people people's belief. And the map team and the VFX team worked extremely hard for players to have a unique experience throughout this season. But not only the maps, but also menu, loading screen, and the world map as well. I might not mm. say enough, but 
Many thanks to the team for consistent effort and non-stop challenges. And I must say this is the only start. We cannot wait to show more throughout this season. Yeah, thank you to the team. It looks super dramatic to see all those maps with all the changes. So it looks awesome this season. Uh, Nico and Elise, thank you very much for dropping by. Thank we you. Thank are you. going to come back with Andrew for the battle pass. But in the meantime, in between time, we have a lot of unique executions for Tempest to show you. So Warriors, we'll be right back. Oh God. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're really complicated. fast on the BP. That's a smash. <laughs> Shit. <clears throat> Holy shit, this is the best. <laughs> Look at that. This is the best. Holy fuck. <laughs> Oh god. <laughs> that was the best. Oh my god. Even Kyoshin has a, his own execution. That's pretty impressive. Considering he's a new character. <laughs> mm. 
That was the fastest execution on the Janhu. Very fast. The new battle outfits. The crabs. Oh god. The fishy themes. Crabby. Crabby's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Everyone likes Crabby's. Warriors, if you look up here, you're going to see some unique executions and some uh, event weapons raining all during the season of Tempest. But uh, Andrew, we'd like to go to you to talk about what's on the radar now with the uh, the Battle Pass. So what can you tell us? Yeah, Battle Pass contains a lot of uh, rain and the waters. I mean, water in For Honor has a, it contains a lot of symbolic meanings. Uh, the water from the intro cinematic, the water in drought seasons, the water in Tempest season, they all have a different meanings behind. But one thing in common is that somehow it reveals uh, uh, the people's true intentions. The key art, nothing much to say, just amazing. The battle pass weapons, as you can see from here, it's, it's inspired by the Gaudi church and Turkish ornament uh, daggers. This time we wanted to make them look more like uh, uh, King's collections and or the treasure. So expensive and elaborated patterns and gems were used to design them. But treasures sometimes become just rusted, rusted metal when it sunk under the sea. But still, there are definitely amazing collections that players will uh, remember by. Uh, in contrast, uh, for the event weapons, the water ray and uh, the patterns that were created by the wave were used to retexture the weapons. And it's a very calm, uh, deep sea blue will make these weapons to contain tempest in your uh, weapon library. Of course, the mood effect, uh, as you can see, uh, the weapon, but also the mood effect that will kind of show up very soon. <laughs> the Tempest of Ager and the Ren effect with oh the my God, this is cool. ornament, as you saw before, will complete the seasonal fashion. And uh, I think most importantly, perhaps in my opinion, <laughs> the quote-unquote signature uh, with Centurion in the tube. Or whatever you call this. Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> Immediately, we have a little victory. It's going to show off your your fashion as well. And, and this, of course, this is very Shaolin, I think, just using the water. Right. To, uh... That's awesome, Andrew. Thank you so much for, for taking us through that. Uh, any notes of, uh, to kind of conclude on with the, the battle pass? I mean, uh, I don't know about the, everyone in the, in the world, but right now in Montreal, it's very hot outside. I hope you guys enjoy the Tempest that we brought to you guys, and hope you also enjoy the 29 executions. Awesome. That's Thank awesome. you so much, Andrew. We will be right back. First, we're going to show you the Battle Pass weapons, and then we will come back with the testing grounds with Stefan and Benjamin. Thank you very much, Warriors, and thank you, Andrew, for stopping by. Thank you. Wow, these are expensive weapons. Holy shit. 
This is uh, probably the most fucking insane shit I've seen so far. Since I've been playing for not very long, but look at that. That's insane. What the hell is that? Yeah, this is museum quality, you know. Actually, I agree, Alcandras, because the the design of the heroes is what kind of, you know, caught me originally when I started playing. I was so surprised that every hero is so different visually and uh, mechanically. That's why I, I I started playing the game. I just enjoyed that every hero like moves differently. You know, every ha hero have different weapons. This is so cool. Look at that, that's insane. That's just insane. The details are you know, out of this world, I think. RGB <laughs> to the Warriors Den. It's time to talk about some testing grounds, and of course we can't do that without our lovely guests. Stefan and Benjamin are here. How, how, how are you guys doing? Welcome, welcome. We're doing great, I think. How about you, Ben? Yeah, super. I'm ready for this. Yeah, no, this is going to be this is going to be a really awesome uh I feel like I feel like we're missing somebody actually. We can't really do the testing grounds without a certain someone. I feel. <gasps> Were you guys <laughs> what, what's happening? Actually, if you're like this, is that's not right. What He's here. <laughs> JC, welcome to the show. How are you doing? I'm pretty good. What about you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Doing yeah, good. I'm probably, yeah, yeah. Super. I'm I'm very excited because like when it comes to the testing grounds, we have like a little bit to kind of get through. We want to kind of go over the previous testing grounds that we had, uh, what, what we kind of learned from it. So, uh, Stefan, why don't you go ahead and start us off? Uh, what do we kind of learn from uh, the recent uh, testing grounds, and uh, where do you kind of see uh, things playing out? Perfect. We we got a bunch of cool stuff coming uh, at the start of the Tempest season. Uh, some of the things will come from the testing ground. Some of it will not uh, come at the start of the season and will be delayed to another testing ground. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, and then there's a couple other cool improvements that we're going to see uh, also at the start of the season. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna kind of go over just like a a little like rundown of what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna talk about some of the um, Orochi improvements and where the team is kind of looking at uh, taking him once the uh, once ready for for live. Uh, we're also gonna talk about some raider improvements because I have seen a lot of raider 
uh, threads over on Reddit and Steam, and I know there's there are some uh, questions that the community would like to have answered. Uh, and then we're also going to get into option selects, another thing we also had in the testing grounds. Uh, and those are, those are sorry, the big three that came from testing grounds in the previous season. Uh, Shinobi uh, has a number of cool things in it and a number of things we need to fix. So that's why it's going to go to another testing ground. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, okay. Uh, but the others are going to go live with some fixes. Very, very exciting. I'm really excited. I'm also really excited to see what we're doing for Shinobi uh, V2 as we're kind of uh, dubbing him here. But yeah, freaking Orochi Raider coming to... You said you also said option selects as well, right? Yep. All the cool stuff is All here. All of that awesome stuff will be launching. Nice. And coming. Very excited. We're also talking about Sticky Dodge. Crash charge changes, uh, a couple of other things as well. Very nice. But, but yeah, that. We'll, we'll find out. With Tempest. Let's go ahead and get into what we will be discussing for this new testing ground, season 19. There's going to be a lot of really cool things. So let's start off with Orochi. Let's, uh, let's get into some Orochi details. What can you tell us? Awesome. Uh, super high level. I just want to say thanks to everybody who participated in the previous testing ground, filled out the survey, played, uh, killed people, got killed by people, all the good stuff. Um, we need your feedback, and this is why you're going to see some of the improvements uh, that are being made to both Orochi and Raider uh, that are going live with the uh, the testing ground improvements, and also why uh, we'll see Shinobi in, at the end of this in the uh, uh, in the next testing ground. The, the loop is basically uh, we require your your input and your help to to make things things happen. So uh, you're going to see some results of that today. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now let's um now JC. Why don't we go ahead and get into some of the uh, good stuff about Orochi? Some of the things right. people like, all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So uh, first of all, Orochi. I think from from what we got from the surveys and what we've seen from the community was by far the most well-received one out of the bunch that we had. People were super hyped. Um, there was a lot of really, really good stuff. The main point that we got, I think I saw it on Reddit like a million times, um, is dodge cancel timing, right? So yeah. a lot of people were kind of unhappy at uh, when you could dodge cancel out of stuff with Orochi. Uh, so we're going to go over it, but that was the main sticking point. We've also made some other changes based on feedback, so we're going to go through them uh, one by one. Sick, let's do it. All right. So first up, we have dodge cancels, like I was mentioning, right? So uh, it wasn't as effective in group fights as we expected. So on top of getting a lot of feedback, how it, it felt maybe like a bit unresponsive or not super good, the other data that we've gathered was that it wasn't as strong as we wanted to. So because of that, uh, we've put it at 200 MS after every single recovery. Uh, it used to be at 333. So now at 200. Uh, it's a lot more effective. You can dodge out of stuff. You can also still delay it up, up to a 333. So it gives you a bit more flexibility in how you can use it. Try to get some like uh, meaty deflects and stuff that uh, seem kind of cool. And we, we also added the, the uh, possibility of dodge canceling dodge attacks as well. Uh, we weren't able to before. We were a bit worried about a bunch of those things. Uh, like having people, yeah, do dodge for a kick over and over and over again, for example. Uh, so now that uh, we're we're a lot less concerned with that one specifically, so with this we can dodge, we can uh, cancel your dodge attack recoveries with other dodge. So that, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to see those what anime. What the fuck is it? Another TND coming? <laughs> the uh, the main question I usually heard from people was like, why even did we make it at a later timing than it was on normal Orochi? And the main reason for that is because with the introduction of the kick, uh, certain things would have been guaranteed at the old timings, like the, the 200 MS timing that you see here. Uh, so we've adjusted a couple other things to try to compensate for this, so you're not guaranteed to get a kick after after something else. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that makes a big difference. All right. So other changes, right? So uh, we also heard you guys, uh, the Orochi's damage was a bit overtuned, was a bit too high, uh, especially with all those combo lights. So now uh, we've reduced the damage of most of Ruchi's openers by two. Uh, it kind of varies. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like much, but uh, it, it actually makes a bit of a difference. A bit of a difference. Uh, so that's that's interesting. Uh, the other really top requested feedback was that zone attack still felt a bit lackluster. Was not super useful. You kind of like were stuck when you're using. You had to dodge cancel. 
So it is now officially a chain starter. So we're going to have video at the end of this we can show you. But uh, zone attack counts mm -hmm. as an opener, so you can do dodge attack, and then dodge attack, zone attack rather, into combo light, into uh, like dodge cancels, into drop every finisher, into whatever you like. So that's pretty good. Uh, we've also put light dodge attacks uh, back to being light parries. They were heavy parries as kind of an experiment mm -hmm. that uh, we ended up like the, it was in as a bug. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. So that's it. So we, we, we kept nice. it a, a, a heavy parry mm -hmm. just so we were trying to do some things. But uh, it turns out that it's a bit too strong for Ruchi. Uh, he has really, really good dodge attacks, like Riptide and stuff, like, extremely strong. So that's uh, they're back to being light parries, so uh, Orochis can just constantly side dodge light or Riptide and then never get punished for it. So that's pretty good. And last but not least, uh, another thing that was uh, brought up by a lot of players uh, was that Wind Gust, which is a deflect punish, um, did not beat uh, armored attacks, right? Uninterruptible stance is armor. So it did not beat it. So you couldn't deflect somebody and then do Wind Gust into armor and not beat them, kind of like what Valkyrie can do, for example. So now Wind Gust properly does that. So uh, you're pretty much guaranteed your Wind Gust every single time you manage to deflect, which is mm -hmm. really, really, really useful for for Uchi. So we can have that video now for his own attack, if we want, Max. Yeah, Max is super sus. So yeah, we can see now that's it. So zone attack goes into top of your finisher. You can do combo light. You can do whatever you want. It basically is a chain starter. That's good stuff. I definitely do think that having uh, changing the uh, changing that's probably going to do a, a lot for for Orochi. And as someone who's but where's the kick? Orochi, I'm very excited to have kind of like more. <laughs> can you show me the kick? To play with. But let's get to, let's get over to Raider. Let's talk about Raider. Yeah. Raider is a Raider is a big fan favorite, right? And. Uh, I've had, uh, I, I've seen a lot of feedback. I've received massive documents from some players in the community with what they'd like to see done to Raider. So uh, yeah, we can get into it. Steph, you want to walk us through like a bit of the feedback and what we got? Uh, sure. I mean, uh, a lot of it was was quite well uh, received. Um, there are some questions about like, hey. Should the Stampede Charge really be a 500 MS, for example, which, I mean, Ben will talk about when we get to Crashing Charge as well. Uh, armor timings, uh, some of the chain rules that were a little, let's say, old school on uh, on Raider. It's like, hey, can I be a little more free on this character and, and effective with my uh, with my armor? Yeah. We'll see. I think, uh, I think the changes we're going to have are going to make some players, especially one specific guy, who, like I said, sent me like a huge Word document, like a university level dissertation of what to do with Raider. So I think uh, that person would be quite happy with these changes. Yeah. I, com I commend players that have the patience and the time to type long stuff like that. Out. I've seen a lot of them. Like, honestly, it, it gets was read. I mean, like, uh, people yeah. don't believe we read it, but I mean, if you get there and it gets on the front page, we're going to read it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, honestly, it. It, like I'm joking about it a little bit, but it was super appreciated. And so, like, whenever we get, like, any feedback is good feedback. So we're we're always happy to take it and read it. And... <laughs> okay, so let's go through it, right? So uh, first up, we have uh, uninterruptible stance timing. Again, that's that's armor. Uh, so we got to be careful. Um, so now uh, we have armor at 100 ms on every chain heavy attack. Uh, a lot of the feedback we got. From the previous timing was that uh, Raider was really weak in group fights. He wasn't getting interrupted quite a bit. So with this change, it's a bit back more to what it's on live right now. Um, it's a super tiny nerf to the heavy finishers that are that were at zero MS. But uh, otherwise, like at 100, it's still really good. You can still trade with dodge attack. You can still do a bunch of different things with that. So that's really, really useful. So, so uh, just a quick little bit of info there is like we can't have it at zero um for rollback reasons uh we can have it later um honestly i thought more people would be mad about it being earlier but they want it earlier so okay cool yeah let's do it <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right so next up we have chain improvements another big thing that people are super, going to be super excited about so you can now do raider storm to raider's fury right so you can do the full raider copter as much as you want uh, whatever you like, but yeah, so that's that's really good. Mm. Another change that we haven't listed here, uh, but that's important to note because that's a lot of another big feedback that we got is that the Raider Storm, which is the neutral zone, um, was costing 12 stamina. Uh, it's up to 20, 
just because, uh, like, it was super easy to get massive, massive pressure when somebody was out of stamina. So we changed that a little bit, but there's compensation for it uh, a bit further down the line, so we're going to be good with that. We also added new chain routes for Raider, another big request to thing. So uh, Raider can now chain to his light finishers after his second heavy in chain. So you get you now have light, heavy, light, and heavy, heavy, light as chain routes. Uh, it should help make him a little mm. bit less predictable and have a bit more, a bit better flow. And you're not you're not forced to go into looks like big improvements on Raider actually. Whatever. And last but not least, storming tap, uh, storming tap, rather, yeah, now chains to the second hidden chains instead of chains to finishers. Uh, that's also another really big change. Uh, that's super useful for Raider uh, because it lets him. You're not stuck. Whenever you you used to land the storming tap, you would always go into your finishers, and those finishers were like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, I can't really, I can't really keep going. So it was hard to use in chains, and you kind of felt forced to reuse storming taps or whatever. So with this way. You can do storm and tap into a heavy, uh, into like a zone attack or a light finish or whatever you'd like. So that's really, really strong. Uh, we have a video for this as well, Max, if you want to play it. Yeah, that feels so much better. Oh, yeah. It, it's amazing. Yeah. So zone to zone. All right. Zone to zone. Can we call that the storming storm? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the stormiest storm to ever storm. Very <laughs> fitting for Tempest. Yeah, so you see we have like oh my God. the light and all those sort of things. So it's it's super useful. He's really good. Uh, and with that said, with the changer, we <clears> see <throat> after the storming tap, he did like two heavies back to back. So that was uh, quite interesting. Well, better, okay. better prepare so, your uh, parry button. Yeah, it's real sick. It's really cool. uh, attack speed. So more buffs. Um, yeah, yeah, more buffs, right? Th th that's one of the things, right? Like, we didn't do that many, like, Raider was better in the testing grounds, but it was still a bunch of stuff that needed a bit further tweaking, so we're super confident. Uh, so, yeah, so speaking of uh, compensations, I said earlier for uh, Raider Storm being a bit, uh, costing more stamina, is uh, we've sped up uh, Raider's neutral heavy attacks. So, a top of your op opener, rather, is now 900 milliseconds. Uh, it's your go-to uh, light parry punish. And then the side of the openers are 800 ms. So uh, you can use those uh, as garbage punishes now. That's the that's man. The that's a lot of time to parry, but still, you know, and now it's I'm a filthy four. casual. I still can fuck it up. Well. So now with that back to 20, uh, the side of the finisher, the side of the openers rather being 800, kind of helps making sure that you can actually land more damage in case you don't want to do stampede charge. Um, and Raiders Fury. Uh, is 966 milliseconds. That might seem like a slightly weird number. I was going to ask about that. I'm like, it's a very yeah. specific number. Why don't you <laughs> tell us what the reasoning behind it is? That entire 33 milliseconds is the difference between landing a storming tap, going to Raider's Fury, and being interrupted or, or trading and not, right? So with this change, Raider can do storming tap into Raider's Fury, and uh, if your opponent was mashing light to interrupt, uh, not only will they not interrupt, it won't trade, and Raider is going to win every single time in this situation. Uh, so it again, it looks just like, dodge. Oh, you know, yeah, that's what I do that because I, I I'm shit. Uh, that's really, really cool. Beautiful. Yeah, and then uh, this is one of the I think the last huge thing on Raider that. A lot of people were talking about, like, uh, I, I remember reading feedback from uh, some of the pro players that I was seeing that uh, they actually preferred getting, like, trading with with uh, Raider's Fury uh, just because the recovery of a lot of his attacks was super, super, super long. So we did a pass on them, and they're now maxed out at 800 milliseconds. So uh, it's not as, like, the ones that were faster, like for heavy finishers and light finishers and all of his light attacks are still... <laughs> going to be 700 on hit block but on miss and for his other attacks as well they're maxed out at 800 which means that uh, you should be frame advantage you should have like much better control over raiders attacks and uh, it should really help with his recoveries that were quite long some of them were like over a second and so with this it makes a, it's a significant buff to raider to his group fight ability it, it feels much better going to one as well so it's huge there was one uh, similar thread that came through for both Orochi and Raiders. Okay, like, where other changes. Or other changes. Or dodge timings on Orochi. Give me. So I want <laughs> option selects removed. Yeah. And then the separately viability. <laughs> Give me. Move, but uh, feel was was a big one in, in this testing ground. Yeah. So it's super important. So that's it for Raider. So we're gonna look at the other changes now. I do believe that one of these changes is option selects. Now I was one of the 
many members on the community team that was keeping an eye on like option select kind of feedback and correct me if i'm wrong i definitely do think the change on tg was very well received uh a lot of players seemed like the, the, the game it, like breathed new life into the game which is nice so super excited <laughs> we're, we're finally being able to get this into the, the live build so players can can play around and and you know not lose their matches hopefully but yeah, yeah let's oh let's uh let's let's, let's talk about, yeah. Let's talk about so, options, yeah okay so option selects are in so the improvements that we did on the testing grounds are going in as is um, so, uh, including zone option select, I know some people are going to be a little bit disappointed that they liked it, um, and that it helped players defend in group fights. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, remove <laughs> from that from this. <laughs> <that'd be better. laughs> I'm just watching Stefan like laughing and me, like, me. Yeah. I thought you were editorializing. I didn't know I was. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> No, yeah, no, no. It's, it's, right. it's, it feels a little shocking <laughs> at first. If if you don't know what option selects are, don't worry about it. The only thing you need to know is that you were losing matches to people who knew what it was. Yeah. Uh, and this, that's why I was losing all this time. Now I can't start winning. Screwing you with mechanics, basically. So that's removed. Number one. Uh, number two, will time to kill be too high for ultra top level play? We will see as time goes on. Uh, but the game is so much healthier, so much better. And then you got me editorializing, but like, this is a good change. Everybody enjoy it, please. Uh, Thank you God. Know, you know, you can internally, <laughs> internally, we've been playing with this on for like a couple of months now. And I think nobody on the team that's been playing can say that the game's been <laughs> like objectively feel way better. It's like, scary at first, though. I mean, honestly, get, like, we were scared. Get wrecked, you noobs. Sessions and so on. But, uh, over time, you're actually like, mm, it slightly changes the uh, the dynamics from defense to offense, uh, but the games don't become like bizarre, broken because of it. It feels good. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry, Gummy. Uh, what I noticed, <laughs> like I thought, I thought uh, like the good players would kind of be brought down to our levels because now they couldn't do all of the uh, option select stuff. But really, if you're a good player at For Honor, you're still a good player even without the option select. So, like, don't worry about <laughs> that too much, but get adjusted to it, and you'll still be owning noobs uh, just like I mean, before. I mean, like, honestly, all three of us get regularly bodied by PKLX and Nuke, so it's not uh, it's not like they're not good anymore or, you know, so <laughs> it feels really good. Um, one thing I want to add, though, is that the tech that we have to clear out option selects uh, deals with the vast majority of them. There's one um that i won't go into detail because it's like pretty complicated that we got feedback on during the testing grounds that um is a lot more complicated to use uh that is not addressed by this but we're going to address it in the further updates that we're going to look into it to make sure that it's also fixed in the future awesome super excited to hear about that oh some emote oh, is that option oh. select is that no rally call? yeah rally call so that's is that like we're not doing that how are we? Like, Is that supposed to work? Wait I... a few years again? I thought we were supposed uh... to leave it busted forever. That's the, that's the joke. That? Um, you know, free free I like, uh... today in one of his videos that uh, like we kind of teased it. No, we didn't really tease it. It was just, you know. Kinda... No. No, was... <laughs> um, but yeah, I liked how Joss kind of went over it and skipped it because he got distracted. <laughs> That was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, yeah, chat is probably just going crazy right now, but we completely ignored it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I did do it. Uh, Will in heaven did it for us. Um, so he fixed Rally Call. So if you're playing Dow, he, 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 he's not dead. He's not dead. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> They're amazing, man. Uh, okay. Really good. So, yeah. Uh, Especially the, the Highlander. Now actually does something. Um, <laughs> And we also uh, did something to how it considers, uh, you know, critical and very critical health. So now when you're below 50, it's going to activate and it's not going to get better when you're at below. Yeah, 20. the glad one is insane, so too. It's an even better the Yorm. if it had worked all this time. Um, and the vital leech also got uh, the same treatment, basically. So uh, look forward to... Uh, Getting that feedback into your feed selection on this hero uh, and uh, see how that feels. Yeah. yeah try it out one more time. <laughs> if you've turned it off for three years, yeah. it's time to try it out once more. Give it a give it give it a whirl. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, these are these are all of the the changes that will be launching with 
Panthers when it comes yeah. out on September 9th. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get into the new testing grounds. Wait, sorry, sorry, just, just before wait, we, wait, we, wait, we still got more. There's so, more. Two more. There's more. more. But, but wait, there's <laughs> more. <laughs> I, I thought it was going to be late season two, but I was proven wrong as well. So, so uh, check this one out. Sticky Dodge. Yeah, so Sticky Dodge, right? So if you don't know what Sticky Dodge is, you probably have experienced it, but you didn't know what was going on. Um, it's a bit of an issue that we had in the game where it typically happened when you target swap during an attack, right? So if that 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 you would dodge in the game in relation to where your camera was facing. So if your camera was like if you were seeing yourself, and you would dodge to the left, like on your if your controller you did left and dodge, then you would dodge to the right because you would move. In relation, you would dodge in relation to the camera. So they made like some for some super really weird situations. Uh, sometimes you would try to back dodge. And you would oh, that's why I lose. All sorts of weird things. So uh, we've actually addressed this. So we're no longer in those sticky situations. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> that was not the easiest one to do. Um, yeah, so <laughs> dodging is no longer based on camera orientation, but it's based on player input. So right now, if you hold left and you dodge, your character should always dodge to the left. Uh, oh, thank God. Whatever direction you were holding. Oh, God. The important thing thank to know is that you. this should be thank fixed you. for pretty Jesus. much everything, but there might still be some <laughs> dodge attacks that might have issues with, like, targeting. Um, if you do experience those, uh, please report them, and uh, we'll look into them, make sure we're, we're going to be fixing them. But uh, overall, this issue should be really fixed, and it works so much better. I remember... Ben, I don't know if you want to recall when the first time you tried it out, how happy you were. I, this is low-key the best change, like, since release. <laughs> this is the best fix. Like, it, like, people don't even realize how frustrated they are at Sticky Dodge, I think. Like, they think, oh, shit, why did I not dodge in the right direction? This game is bugged. And they didn't even realize, like, there was, like, a, a but game. But the game is really thing, bugged. Right? And now it's fixed. So it's, like, and now it's not. This. It's, it's so much more fun to play the game now. <laughs> yeah, amazing stuff. I mean, great job to everybody on, on the Forerunner team. All these things, is it's amazing to see. Uh, so we got what? We got one more before we get into the testing ground, I think? Yeah, Benjamin's yeah. getting yeah. excited over here. <laughs> yeah. So oh, I like, card. at the start, I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it said crashing oh. charge. Oh. Uh, so Look at that. We made it, we made it better, right? Warlord. So you hit someone, Bye. you teleport to the nearest ledge, and they explode uh, into a glory of guts. Uh, so yeah, it's not an improvement, it's a nerf, uh, because this move is, is crazy. Um, so first off, when you get someone with Crashing Charge as the Warlord, uh, it's no longer a case of even if a catapult hits you, it, you're still gonna get thrown off the ledge. Uh, now there is reaction when someone hits you. There's no super armor, there's no uh, yeah, complete invincibility going on anymore, so that's the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, you could crash and charge into a wall, let someone go, hit the wall, you go back into unlock, you run, and you crash and charge him again, into the wall again, he has no stamina, alt F4, I don't know, <laughs> the game's over, it's really <laughs> annoying, so, uh, uh, afterwards too, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, like solo infinite, get like getting yeah. someone to a ledge from 40,000 yeah, miles there's away. There's a notorious video that we watched where it's like the guy is like full stamina, gets hit on the wall like two times, has no stamina, gets unbalanced, the warlord eats a, an ice cream cone, runs at him, boom, <laughs> unbalanced again, uh, a little quick selfie or anything, and then he just does this again until he re reaches the ledge and the guy just dies and it was the saddest thing ever. Um, so now, uh, crashing charge no longer unbalances people that are out of stamina. That are out of stamina. So now you know you should no longer be having infinites with crashing charge. It's still a great move in itself, but I feel like we removed all of the really uh, overwhelming elements of the move. Yeah. So uh, here's hoping uh, that meets the uh, the uh, our players' uh, expectations. We so, we've uh, slowed it down too it, a bit, right? We slowed it down a bit. It was, I think, 700 ms. Now it's 600 ms. Uh, so it's it's on, on par with the new Stampede Charge, basically. Yeah. yeah. So both end up at six at this point instead of uh, five, which we tested, I think, later on in testing ground. Uh, so that's super cool. I think less solo infinites is always good. 
and it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the Dominion series with uh, possibly the strongest character or very close to it uh, taking this nerf. Yeah, uh, or the crazy meta figure. Yeah, Raider yeah, probably is better now. Crash, crashing Charge was a, a bit frustrating, uh, so I'm happy that we're um, kind of making some changes to it. And I also like that you mentioned Dominion. Because now, this is the perfect segment. I was getting ahead of myself earlier. Now, let's talk about the new testing grounds, which, we, which will be running from September 16th to September 30th. Uh, again, we will also have a Shinobi uh, V2 version in this round of testing grounds, which we will get into uh, in a little bit. But let's go ahead and start off from the top and talk about uh, some. We're going to talk about some of the, the like the Dominion game mode changes, which I kind of mentioned earlier. <laughs> or briefly, because I think, I think we're starting with Shinobi dude. Like, I don't know. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I would. But I am. I'm honored by your excitement. <laughs> I'm very. Excited. I'm pretty sure. Then, let's let's start with Shinobi. Overall, uh, radar looks Shinobi really cool. See, like a lot of positive uh, reactions from the community. There are some a couple of things that they are looking to see uh, kind of improved on and tweaked a little bit. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive right into it. What do we What do we have? So. Yeah, so Shinobi was actually pretty well received, despite like uh, some uh, some hate for some people. Uh, the idea being that like Shinobi was a bit too strong, uh, partially due to some bugs that we've addressed, but also because of some like other weirdo issues with some stuff that we're we're gonna go into a little bit deeper. Uh, the other issue that Shinobi's had was that uh, his openers were not viable enough, uh, namely dodge forward kick, was not as strong as it should be for a lot of different reasons. And uh, shouldn't we also suffer from, from some input leniency problems? I'm happy I can pronounce that correctly. Um, yeah, so we've made some changes to that as well. All right, well, let's get to it. We're going to talk about wall splat eventually, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wall splat. Right, right. right. <laughs> a lot of wall splat. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, block, not a feature. <laughs> yeah. So we've removed bleed from Shinobi entirely. I know some people are going to be disappointed. Oh. Oh, I like that my Shinobi would make people bleed. But there's a lot of good coming from removing bleed. Right? So we remove bleed damage from Sickle Rain, from Shadow Strike, and from Teleport. Uh, but all these attacks now deal direct damage. So Shadow Strike, which is the, the Light Fairy Punish, uh, deals 18. And Teleport now deals 24 up front. Uh, I think people are going to be super excited about that. Uh, bleeding there didn't make much sense anyway. And it's also a lot easier to balance. And it feels better when your damage comes in right away. Like, you do lose a little bit of synergy with, like, Nobushi or Shaman or whatever. But at the end of the day, like, it, 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 Shinobi did not need that. And it's also this is also kind of a bit of, a, of an adjustment. Because Revenge, does, like, revenge is not uh, affected by bleeding. So if you bleed somebody, it doesn't feed them extra revenge. This now does, but it has an effect on when you lose, when you actually land sickle rain, you're not able to do it uh, infinitely, uh, and go, oh, well, you know, I can never pop revenge. So that's and that cool. free predator's mercy, man. I'm gonna miss yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It's sad. Shaman is steps bleeding. <laughs> no bias. No bias. <laughs> so sickle rain, right? So we did a couple of changes to sickle rain as well. Uh, it's no longer accessible after a guard break. We had initially done that change to kind of have the same feeling as you have when you did a ranged guard break. You can go into a sickle rain immediately. Uh, and it also made Shinobi super threatening whenever you did like faint to guard breaks and stuff. Uh, but it was honestly a bit too strong. So we removed that direct link immediately. Oh, thank uh, God. No longer some drain some stamina. Oh, God. Sickle rain. Not all roads, though. Not. Some of those roads have deviated. We went to other outlets. Right. Uh, he has also 20 damage up front and 3 per stab, so for a total of 29. Uh, damage is a bit on the low side for a heavy finisher, but it pins you for so long that it makes total sense. You'd still get free heavies from allies and stuff, and that, that's pretty good. Uh, it also no longer ignores pinning rules. Uh, that was an issue that Shinobi on live right now, as uh, some people have seen in videos and stuff, actually still has, but because Sickle Ring was so much more easily available, uh, it was super apparent. So now you can't, like, you can't have a Shigoki, for example, do a, a Demon's Embrace on somebody and then have a random Shinobi just sickle rain you out of it and still pin you. So uh, that's also a really, a really big change. And it also no longer drains stamina. It used to drain 30 stamina when it landed. Uh, it was done in a bit of a weird, janky way. Uh, so that's all been removed. Uh, so sickle rain should be a lot healthier now. And it's still, it's still a very strong tool. It's still a super good ganking tool. 
still pins for a long period of time, still really easily accessible. Uh, and the changes from the previous testing grounds are still in, right? So it's still unblockable from the top, unblockable from the side, all that good stuff. Uh, so that uh, that should still like it, mm. it, it's a change. It makes it makes it a little worse, but it's still a very 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 good move. Next up, we have ranged heavy. Oh my god! So yeah, so uh, it was interesting, right? Because the wall splat was granted a bit too strong. Mostly because you got free sickle rings afterwards. I think that was the, the source of uh, a lot of frustration. Uh, but on top of it, the other issue that people had with it was that you could target swap it. And we had intentionally done the, that target swap, right? So you could actually be good with a shinobi in a group fight. And like, let's say you start with somebody, you kick them, target swap, throw out a range heavy at somebody, go back on your main target, roll, and do all that sort of good stuff. And that felt really good. But the problem was that you could still get an off-screen, uh, relatively highly damaging uh, bash that you could not see coming at all. So because of that, we removed the target swapping from range heavy. You can still target swap the front roll, though. So you can still go on a single target, dodge kick into range heavy, target swap, roll, and it's still going to work. But that's it. It was a little bit too, uh, too frustrating for players. So we removed the target swap from it. And... Because we removed the target swap from it, it no longer made sense for that range heavy to be accessible after a backflip. Because uh, you can just like, it was so easy to dodge that it made zero sense to use it. Right. So the main purpose of having it after a backflip was to target swap it. So because we removed it, it made no sense for you to have it there. It sounds like it'll be a lot less, uh, not really spammy, but I guess just frustrating. Just constantly yeah. just getting s splatted. Yeah, yeah exactly. non-stop sure. splat yeah, with, with that, like, no fucking mana. You, you, you'll see with Fuck Shinobis, you know. Another cancer in the game. Uh, now, now it's input leniency. Oh, I did it good again. So we adjusted, uh, like, we usually say comfort, you know, but I gotta be fancy today. Um, so we adjusted it a little bit on the front roll follow-up and on shadow strike. So front roll, uh, a lot of people didn't seem to kind of, like, grasp where we were going with it which is fine that's my mistake uh but the idea was that you would front roll and you had like a huge window to buffer your follow-ups so with it whether it was the flip kick or sickle ring yeah um but because that window felt a bit unnatural uh people didn't really take to it and they, they would typically like hit the buttons late and then the, the, the wrong thing would come out so we've actually made the the the, the input window a bit longer so you can actually do flip kick and sickle ring a bit longer, a bit later after you do a front roll. I have to warn you though, if you don't buffer it, uh, it might not be as strong against players who early dodge it, but at least the comfort's going to be there and it's going to be good to play as, and it makes sense. Uh, the other thing we did was for shadow strike, uh, the the window we had to actually use a shadow strike was so tiny. Uh, ben remembers this when we were doing uh, Centurion there. We had like some super super small input windows so it's now much bigger it should it's a lot easier to land a shadow strike and going through mix-ups when you manage to parry them so that also feels good yeah yeah okay front roll and backflip uh so we've done a couple of change titles as well so that they feel more like they're dodges right so they now have iframes are for 300 milliseconds on front and back i think backflip having iframes is one of the things that People have been claiming for for the longest time since we lowered the range mm. that it had. Uh, before you could like it would go back for so far that you know it was kind of crazy. But with this, at least like you're able to avoid attacks with it. So that's pretty good. But they no longer have guard break vulnerability, uh, invulnerability rather. Sorry, I, that's a bit of a typo there. So uh, you can get guard broken when you're doing a front roll or a backflip. So the idea is that it's more like a dodge, like I said. So you have to be a bit more careful when you use them. But you're still going to, you should be able to avoid attacks with it, which is kind of like more with, with uh, dodges. Uh, backflip also now can be accessed after most attacks on hit, block, and miss. Back to how it is on live, pretty much. So you can, uh, people that miss doing a light backflip, you can now do it if you want, although you don't, you don't, you're not really going to get a range heavy afterwards. So, no. But that's part of why we also removed the, the, the range heavies after backflip is that. Since you can now backflip on command on a bunch of things, uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be able to just off-screen backflip. It's like a whole character. new character now, actually. But uh, with this, a what's whole new character. Is that it gives Shinobi a lot of options to avoid dodge attacks 
and uh, to be able to be a bit more mobile when he's playing, so that should really help him out. And last but not least, front roll has uh, extra forward movement. Some of the feedback we got from some players was that uh, they like to be able to target swap front roll, but it didn't go further enough. So you would just like target swap front roll, and Shinobi would be like, "Oh, what's a roll?" And then he would just like roll and play. Kind of what's stuff. that? Uh, what's that, right? So he would just like yeah. uh, do a barrel roll in front, and you wouldn't go anywhere. So that didn't really work well. So we had those changes as well. And then finally, uh, this mostly affects dodges and double dodges. Uh, so we removed the ability of double dodge to dodge backwards. Uh, that was still a problem. We got a lot of feedback from players at higher levels that saying, look, uh, Shinobi is still so slippery that I can't do anything about him because he still just does side dodge, back dodge, side dodge, back dodge. So that felt really bad. So we removed that completely. Uh, so Shinobi can't just like, you know, run it, run away from opponents as easily as he could before. Uh, but double dodge can now act as openers like you can on live right now. So you can do side double dodge uh, into a light or into a heavy and get those options back. Uh, we had removed them because they felt a little bit weird to have on those double dodges, but a lot of players said that they were actually really useful and were using them, so we put them back in. Uh, another thing that we're trying out is that front dodge kick. Uh, you can now do it at 200 ms from front dodge, and you can delay it up until 500. Uh, compared to before where it was 300. So that's a test we're also doing to see if it actually helps. Because we know that when it's at 100, it's super strong. And at 300, depending on what the character can do, so some characters that have like a dodge for like lighter heavy options, for like Zanhu, for example, you can't just go, oh, I see any type of red and I dodge and I beat everything. So with this, uh, mm -hmm. hopefully it's going to be a bit harder to react to. And uh, at especially high levels, uh, it should have a bit more viability. And uh, the last thing we did was that double dodge now costs six stamina. Uh, it used to, we had removed the cost on it because it was like, okay, well, you know, we want to have Shinobi to be more mobile and stuff. But again, people were like spamming double dodges and like, you know, running circles around people all nonstop. It's, <laughs> it's kind of cool, you know, but at the same time, uh, we don't want people to be able to just infinitely dodge. Yeah. And also, that's what's annoying. Dodge grants a second deflect attempt, right? It's kind of, you kind of have to have some sort of small cost to pay to be able to have that sort of strength, but it's still pretty strong. But that's it for Shinobi changes. Uh, that's awesome. All right, now before we start showing off the Dominion changes, I you know I took a, I took a little gander, to see what we're we're doing to to Dominion. Now mind you, this is for the testing grounds. It's not going live right away, so definitely you know once this uh, testing grounds goes live, go ahead and give us your feedback. But Steph. I need to ask you, what was the 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 reasoning behind wanting to kind of tweak uh, Dominion a little bit and kind of uh, you know mm. do what we're doing with Dominion? I don't want to spoil it. So you know. <laughs> wait, what what, what is going uh, on? <laughs> basically, with Dominion, there's a couple of problems that that we're experiencing in the game uh, right now. Like one, uh, how predictable is it from game to game? Like when are you getting your feats unlocked? When are the renown bonuses coming? There's a number of renown bonuses. You'll know Ace. You'll know some other ones that are like, they happen at pretty unpredictable times. Let's say, like either you'll get it and suddenly your team will be rocking, or you won't and your team will be losing. And the other one I can sum up in a nutshell that I think everyone can relate to is like, I'm an assassin and I either got my tier four in like three minutes or I never got even out of my tier like one and two the whole game, even though I dominated. Uh, it's ah, quite. Yeah, I get it. Yes, exactly. It's it's quite feast or famine for for especially for assassins, and so we're trying to smooth this out a little bit. Uh, and I'll let I'll let Benjamin I think hit the uh, the real notes, but uh, I think that's a high level. Oh, it's too late. You spoiled it. I spoiled all the good stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Benjamin, walk us through the changes that we are bringing to Dominion on the testing grounds because yeah. it's. I, I don't I don't like graphs or weird things like this with multicolors and letters and, and numbers. So explain this to me in the as yeah easily as possible. Yeah, okay for sure. Uh, but still take out your monster or something because you're you're gonna be hearing me talk over graphs for a while. Um, or drinks. So yeah, first off, <laughs> for okay. sure. Okay. Um, so we're doing a huge thing to Dominion, right? It's very scary for us uh because it's our it's our most favorite mode it's our most popular so we are doing definitely a uh, a testing ground on this 
and we're going to be needing your feedback. So please go play this thing a lot so that we can look at the data, at the data, uh, and then figure out where we go from here. So here we go. So first off, the thing that uh, Steph just brought for us is that yes, uh, Vanguard, Assassin, Heavy, Hybrid, doesn't matter. You kill someone, you're going to get the same amount of renown. You contest a zone, you're going to get the same amount of renown per minute. You kill a minion, and you're an assassin. You're not going to be like, I'm getting half the renown than everyone else. No, everyone now gets the same amount of renown. So that's the thing that we expect everyone is going to be on board with. Like, they're going to love this. You mean that can lane as an renown? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you can be an Orochi laner if you want. Uh, do uh, light, light, heavy, and uh, <laughs> two zones, and be out of stamina. I think, no, that, honestly, he's still probably going to be a bad laner, but at least he's not going to feel as bad doing it. Um, so, um, we also uh, kind of standardized the uh, renown values of doing the actions in, uh, in Dominion. So, if you look at the top, for example, uh, on the hero kills, hey, go back, Marks. Go back. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you look at the hero kills, you'll see that in the TG on the right is the values that you're going to be having uh, on the testing grounds. Uh, it's at 20. Uh, it it looks like we're doubling the amount of renown for each kill. But what this is not saying is that we have removed basically all of the special snowflake rewards that you got for getting hero kills. So basically, whenever you made a kill, you didn't get for example, if you're an assassin, if you didn't get just 11, you got 11 minus a value because you were doing a dishonorable fight uh, in a 2v1. Uh, but maybe you got some renown for killing the guy that just killed you and maybe some other renown for doing an, uh, an execution. So this is what uh, Stefan was saying earlier. It made things very, very, very confusing for us. It made it confusing for you. And, uh, and so we decided to scrap most of them. Uh, so now uh, what you're seeing on screen right now is basically all the renowned sources in Dominion now. That is all, except three of them, which are Revenge, Streak Breaker, and Come Back. So uh, when you get killed a bunch of times and you get a kill, you'll get a renown bonus. When you break someone's streak, you'll get a bonus. Uh, and when you uh, kill whoever killed you, you'll get a bonus. So what you'll be seeing here is that we're kind of encouraging uh, these comeback mechanics, basically. Um, if we go down the bit a list, uh, the list a bit, you'll see as well that defense zones, uh, the notorious defense zone, has been completely killed. Uh, so now, uh, what it used to happen is uh, if you were a vanguard and you killed someone in your capture zone every friend that was in the capture zone got 25 renown, including yourself. So you can understand that at the high level, uh, people might not want to go take that other guy's zone when the whole team is in there, uh, because you might be giving like 100 renown to the other team, like super easily. So we yeah, just asked and get, get a so corrupt on there. the warmonger. Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, you'll see that the contest and the boosting zone values have been changed. Uh, I'll let you do the math on that one, but basically we want to con we want you to be contesting zones more and boosting zones less. So really, uh, this is also that people feel free, feel more encouraged uh, to go get the opposing zones. Uh, all right, now Max, you may you may go forward unless uh, JC and uh, Stefan have some comments on this one. I mean, honestly, I'm 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 psyched that I can play assassins now and not, you know not have to rely on getting a million kills to get my feet. So that's, I gotta say, we've been playing this a while internally and it, it felt so much better. Yeah, and as you say, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, just like the standardization of like Renown is very, it's nice. I've seen, I've seen a couple threads and players kind of talking about that. So congratulations, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Let's not mention that Breach has been doing it for years, but it's fine. Um, so uh, live, uh, as you can see on the left, you see that uh, you get your feet one at 58, feet two at 155, feet three at 265, and feet four at 325. Uh, these felt very arbitrary to us. Like no one really understands anymore uh, <laughs> why these values are so weird. 
Uh, so first off, we made that more, you know, standardized, and we also made it so um, if you get to your feed three, you won't accidentally get your feed four at the same time because the the gap between feed four and feed three is super small. So now you get a progression going forward. So feed one, two, three, and four are progressively longer and harder to get. And we've also raised the cap at which you get feed four to 360 so that uh, mm. we can more freely add some renowned sources in the game uh, without necessarily making everyone get their feed four way too fast. So um, that's it for that. The, the funny thing about this one is it, it seems like actually it's going to be harder to unlock feats. But in reality, it turns out not to be because of the way we've redistributed the points. And mm -hmm. I mean, especially when you get your feet two and your feet three a little more predictably, you can use them to get your kills for your feet four. Uh, so I think you'll find when you play, try it out a few times and, and see what you think. But I think you'll find you'll hit that four a little more reliably. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. All right. Next, uh, the zone capture speed changes. So. As you know, uh, if there are one person, if there's one person on a capture zone, it's going to take five and five seconds for him to capture the zone. Uh, but if a dead ball comes in, uh, it takes 0 0.9 seconds. So, good luck countering a dead ball coming into your zone and capturing your zone. So oh, we shit. scrapped that whole concept, <laughs> and we are trying to see what happens if, no matter how many Way more are combat result, now. It's always going to take 5.5 seconds to Way capture. more combat now. Uh, Way so longer really combat. What we're aiming to be doing here is... Well, I like uh, it. I like this idea. Making capturing a zone feel more like a commitment and, by, and to allow more of a counterplay when you see two guys kind of walking into your zone and you're just like a little far. Uh, you will have time to reach the zone and prevent them from capturing... This is pretty good. ...and, uh, you know, turning the tides. So... I think that's a, a very interesting change uh, on, on those. Yeah, uh, I think next slide, like, please. I, well, if, I, oh, yeah, like, sorry, just, sorry. Just, no, it's okay. What's interesting here is that, like, I know I've been talking to a lot of pro players, and they're telling me that typically what they do at the start of a match is that they have one player go to their home point, and then the other three start roaming, they go into the lane, and you start to do a bunch of different things. So that shouldn't really affect at super high level how this plays, but it also it should also help players that are starting to go, okay, well, we're going to send one person to the to our first point because we don't need to send two or three or four people there anymore. And it kind of helps with that. And also what I'm, what I think what we're hoping to happen is that when you're, when you have like three or four people, if you're trying to go contest your opponent's uh, home point and then you get there, you, you start capping it or something happens or they kill you and they have to, uh, you manage to cap it. They come back, they kill you. They, it, it's not going to get instantly retaken. So that makes a huge difference in giving your team time to come back, like you were saying, and try to get it back and try to have that little back and forth between there to kind of encourage playing more into capturing zones and that sort of stuff rather than just, I'm going to keep my home point and then just go in the lane and just lane forever and just rotate between, you know, home and B and all the time. So that, I think that should be really interesting. Yeah, and then like when you uh, when we kind of like made the changes about and you, you were kind of mentioning uh, did you want people to kind of contest zones more with the, with uh, the amount of players on the zone not really mattering, it, it just allows you to have more time to get to like a, a certain point to contest it. So I think that's really nice. That's a really nice change. It's cool. Yeah. Yep. And uh, to finish it up, uh, we have some changes to the hard points. Uh, so these are the points that you need to win uh, a Dominion game. Um, if you look on the left, you'll see that uh, when you were controlling a minion lane, you would get 1.35 points per second. But if you're controlling one of the capture zones, uh, you would get 0 0.75, which is laughable. Like, really, it's just really bad compared to uh, the minion lane. And don't forget um, that while you're controlling the minion lane, you can still kill minions, uh, minions which give you uh, hard points as well. So really, there's no there's no uh, contesting that the control the minion lane was the place to be the biggest source of hard points as well as the biggest source of renown because killing minions also gives you renown. Uh, so what we're doing here is really lowering massively. Uh, That's what I saw yesterday. The actually, there was a the match as on the ballista the map where they can say just uh, kill the minions. Uh, 
Like, all the way from the start to the end, he just fucking destroyed the minions over and over again. He was not fighting, he was just killing the minions. And we almost lost, because the minion zone has been boosted, uh, like, crazily. Of like, okay, so the main lane isn't necessarily the end all be all place to be for hard points. So we want people to kind of consider all three points and kind of spread out more uh, in a game. And uh, really, that's uh, that's about it. So uh, as I said, we're going to be going to the testing ground with this. We're going to be looking at the data. Cool. Uh, and uh, we are fully committed to, you know, keep going at this until players are mostly satisfied with the values we'll be bringing. And our hope is to make the game more balanced. So stick with us, help us with data, and uh, hopefully we'll make Dominion more fun for y'all. Yeah. And there's a reason why it's two weeks too, right? Is that we want to give players a lot of time to be able to play in that mode. And I think because it's Dominion, uh, my hope at least is that everybody is going to be playing testing grounds instead of playing the regular playlists just because, well, you're playing Dominion anyway, so why not go into testing grounds instead, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's, it's an opportune it's an opportune time to to do it. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts? Because we did go through a lot. So yeah. if anyone has any, uh, final yeah. Thoughts. So uh, everything that I just mentioned is gonna be in the blog post when it's out. So there's gonna be a huge detail of uh, these same graphs uh, with some developers' comments that summarize everything that I just talked about. We have the same for Shinobi and for the the other teams as well. You can look for it for a blog post. It should be really interesting. And I, like I said before, feedback is super important. We look through it. Like I know I, I people don't believe it there, but the, I spend probably too much time on Reddit looking at like all <laughs> the feedback I can get there. Uh, a bit on Twitter, a bit on the official forums as well. But uh, like anything you say, and, yeah. And don't forget the survey as well. Like we look at everything. But uh, yeah, don't think that uh, we don't listen. We're not looking at that's awesome. Whatever we're like actually, that's on awesome. The prowl, hardcore for when the testing grounds are happening. Uh, I tend to stay up late and regret it too much. So uh, that's uh, not good for my health, but uh, it's good for the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like like sixty percent of my job it requires me to talk to players and gather feedback. So please give me something to do. I appreciate. I would very much appreciate it. But. Stefan, JC, Benjamin, thank you much for joining the show today. For the quick TLDR for those who probably who who may not want to watch the whole thing, Raider, Orochi, option select changes. These are coming with the launch of Tempest on September 9th. Then Shinobi B2, all the changes to Dominion will be in the testing grounds second week, September 16th, all the way to the 30th. And as these fine gentlemen have mentioned, definitely go ahead and send us your feedback and give us all of that awesome you know, recommendations, anything you like, you don't like, what you want to see changed. Uh, the survey as well, definitely go ahead and check that out. And uh, yeah, Warriors, we'll be right back to kind of recap everything. And maybe we'll have like a goodie or two in there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll be right back. Thanks, guys. Warriors, what an episode of the Warriors Den this was. I said Warriors twice, but that's okay. Matt, how'd you, how'd you feel about the show today? I felt amazing. Uh, it was really cool to see your testing grounds segment that you hosted with with the fight team. I I always just love seeing them go into like detail about the stuff that they care about, like uh, the Dominion uh, retool, for example. So it was a great show with a lot of great segments. Yeah, I half the time when. The, when did I get uh, any like, drops? Like, talking, I'm just sitting there, just like listening because I'm like I'm like I'm not a dev. Scavenge crates, like, scavenge crates. Goes, but but for them to kind of just go into detail. I got two scavenge crates. Cool. We also got to Fuck, I didn't get steel. Lisa and Andrew to talk about. Hundred uh, thousand steel would be really useful like, though for me. Inspiration for the season. Shit, and, and I wasn't the, lucky. Uh, some of, like some of the art and all this really cool stuff. So and of course and a round of unique executions for Tempest, which. I, I'm pretty sure everyone is excited about. Um, and yeah, so we are we are launching Tempest next month, and we're also uh, going to be dropping a new roadmap. So Matt, let's go ahead and talk about the roadmap and see what we're going to be mm -hmm. dropping. Yes, uh, September 9th, uh, Tempest and Storm the Storm Tides event as well. Uh, and the Battle Pass Points Fest will be happening right away, September 9th through September 13th. So get in there and uh, start playing right away. Uh, we also have September on September 16th through the 30th there, the testing grounds. And it's crucial that you play that and get us your feedback because it will affect the Dominion game mode going forward, um, your, your input there. So please play it and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we also can't keep Shinobi out of it. He keeps coming back. 
So uh, he will be there too with his changes. Um, yeah. Mm. Awesome stuff. And is that a slapping emoji? A slapping shared emote. Paired emote. Whoa. 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 What are you doing? <laughs> oh. All right. Mission failed. We'll get them next time. <laughs> I didn't know which way to turn. Sorry. It's okay. We have strong force powers here. Ten That's our steel for emote. this, by the way. <laughs> I should mention that. 10k steel for the slap off uh, paired emote if you are looking to slap your boys around. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who aren't looking to slap your boys around, Wolves from the Door, uh, if you're a Marching Fire owner, is available from September 2nd through September 9th. Uh, the Slayer Challenge. Shit. With the, uh, Wait, uh, that's so a the new the weekly quest. Formed, uh, to take we know, I know what we're going to do. <laughs> Josh, which faction you got? Who's gonna take this? Samurai. Fight. Fight. Samurai. <laughs> Either way, we also have the Wrath of the Ormengander uh, throwback event from October 7th through October 14th. Big hammer, big snake. That's all you need to know about Wrath of the Ormengander. It's a great event. Mm. Uh, we're excited to have it come back. And the uh, the Dominion series. Clarissa came on and told us a bit about it earlier. Uh, you can still register at battlefy.com slash dominion series for the uh, stage three portion and get in there and back up all that stuff you're saying in tw Twitch chat about how good you are. Uh, we'd you love won't. to see you register. You won't. You won't. No, you have to. Um, <laughs> so register and you can still play that. Uh, Josh, what a long, strange trip it's been. What a long, strange, wet, thundery trip this has been but we're all very excited here for tempest we're, we're all we're super excited for uh, everyone to kind of try out these dominion changes over on the testing grounds when that goes live uh but yeah tempest drops on september 9th folks get your get your ponchos get your umbrellas get your uh your your parkas your uh i don't know what, what other things do people use to not get rained on houses Houses, get your house, get your car, get your, uh, get your, I don't know. Thanks for joining the Warriors Den, everybody. This was a great show. Uh, if you are watching on Twitch, be sure to follow us on Twitch if you are not already. So you can catch all of our awesome Warriors Den episodes. If you're on YouTube, hello, hi, come over, join us on Twitch. And, uh, you know, basically, so you can catch all the stuff that I just said previously. Be sure to also follow us on all of our social media platforms at For Honor Game. And we'll see you, we'll see you in the next one. Get your... Get, get, get your umbrella out. It's going to be a wet one. Later. Later. <laughs> nice. I think that was it. <laughs>